Welcome back. All right, news of the day video for all you fine people yet again. Uh, we're going to talk about Seattle here. Vince Dunn. So Vince Dunn will be staying with the Seattle Kraken. Uh, he earns himself a hefty pay raise coming off of what was a great year. Uh, he gets four years from Seattle. Uh, the cap hit is $7.35 million per season. So, yeah, Vince Dunn getting paid handsomely. Uh, the team now not in a great spot when it comes to the salary cap. They only have $943,424 left. However, they're probably done uh, with done. So you might as well be done with done, I, I guess. Anyway, so that's that's one thing they don't have to worry about. There's some risk to this contract, though. So Dunn had a great year, 81 games, 14 goals, 50 assists, 64 points. At points during the year, he did have some Norris buzz. Uh, but the reality is that his previous career high in points was 35 in a season. So will he stay in that 60-point range? Could he scale it back to 50 or 45? What's going to happen? Uh, with the $7.35 million cap hit, suddenly there's some more pressure on him, and we'll see how things work out. Uh, Seattle had a great season, really, from start to finish, and uh, Dunn was a huge part of that. So if they're going to keep that up this year, they're likely going to need a repeat performance from him. And uh, they're, they're betting on him. So I do like a four-year contract. I've talked about this before. I think four years is the perfect length for a contract. That's me personally. Um, I know people have gotten so used to the six-plus-year contracts. And now when somebody signs four years, you're like, does the team not believe in the player? Or does the player not believe in the team? I don't know. Four years is a nice long commitment. Anyways, uh, so that's done. Uh, and again, done is done. So there, there's numerous puns that can be made with it. But anyways, let me know your thoughts if you're a Kraken fan and just if you're a Blues fan. How do you feel about this? Because you guys watched Vince Dunn for quite some time. Uh, so the NHL has released their uh, behind-the-scenes video on Welcome to the NHL. I think it's 48 minutes. It's on YouTube. It's also on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, they've been releasing these little behind-the-scenes from the draft. They've also released like the videos of every single goal scored by each team. Uh, which has to take a lot of time with the editing. I, I don't envy the editors with that. But uh, it is interesting to see these players and how they, they make their way into the NHL. The funny thing is that at, at this point, interest in this year's draft is, I don't think, that high because, you know, we've gotten through free agency and now we're kind of focused on, well, it's summer first and then training camp. We'll see how things go. I think these videos are more interesting 15, 20 years down the road. I do. I think when you look back on a guy's career and then you look at when he was a, a fresh-faced 19 or 18-year-old coming into the league, those videos get more interesting. So while Welcome to the NHL 2023 edition may not get a ton of interest now, uh, comparatively speaking, it could get a ton 15 years down the road. Uh, somebody just reposted somewhere and goes, hey, remember this? And we can look back and go, hey, this guy turned out to be a bust. This guy was a steal later on. Uh, you know, this kid was nervous, but now he's this fantastic, you know, veteran that doesn't get rattled in the playoffs, that kind of thing. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about, too, because we're, you know, kind of stalled on the free agent market at this point. There's still some players out there. But the one thing that's interesting to me is Tony D'Angelo. So Tony D'Angelo was being traded to Carolina. And the NHL didn't allow that trade to go through. Uh, Philadelphia then just ends up buying him out instead. I'm really kind of surprised that D'Angelo is still out there as a UFA when we're almost a full week out from him clearing the clearing waivers. So again, I think that points to Carolina not being finished with, I almost said done again, uh, with Carolina not being finished with their moves in the offseason and maybe there's another move to be made. But it's interesting that they were trading for him and then they don't sign him after he becomes a UFA. I'm really kind of surprised at that. And that's where you can speculate about what else might be going on, or maybe they had second thoughts. Maybe Don Woodell said, looked at his depth chart and said, nah, until we move, maybe it's moving Pesci that has to happen first. Uh, but yeah, so uh, if, if D'Angelo is going to join the Canes, it, I would think it probably happens over the next couple of weeks, but I'm, I'm mildly surprised he's still out there. And notable UFAs, uh, Bergeron and Krejci top the list, but obviously Ber Bergeron and Krejci, if they're going to come back, uh, Bergeron, it would be as a Bruin. Krejci, I, I don't know if he has any interest in, in playing in the National Hockey League, if not for Boston. He may go home and play as he has before, right? Uh, so yeah, Krejci's NHL career might be finished at this point. Bergeron's, we'll see. He's still making up his mind. Patrick Kane, of course, isn't going to sign before the season starts. Tarasenko fired his agent and wanted to start fresh. Still out there as an unrestricted free agent. 
Uh, Tarasenko may not end up getting the money or term he was looking for. We'll see. Uh, but again, there's a lot of teams now that are up against the cap, so it gets a little trickier. Uh, Thomas Tatar's out there. Tar Tatar actually had a good year for the New Jersey Devils. He didn't have a lot of puck luck. But I think part of what we're seeing here is that I think general managers now understand that players in their mid-30s, the production does drop. Uh, Jay Fresh, if you follow him or you, you keep track of Jay Fresh, he's been putting out charts over the last few days showing how dramatic the drop-off is in production for players once they hit their 30s. And there are exceptions, players that bounce back and have good years in their mid-30s, but it's rare. So this is why we're seeing a lot of these guys still out there, I believe, uh, including Kessel. Uh, Kessel coming off of you know a win with Vegas, but he was a healthy scratch for large portions of that run with Vegas. Uh, Parisi is still out there. If he's going to come back, it'll likely still be with the Islanders. Eric Stahl, will he get signed? Nick Ritchie, same question. Josh Bailey, who was traded to Chicago and then bought out. Uh, Pia Suter's out there, young enough that I think there'll be some interest, but it does matter uh, how many teams are at or near the cap that might be interested in him. And then a couple of goalies, Martin Jones, who had a good record, not great numbers with Seattle, and Halak, who has said he wants to keep playing, but he's 38 years of age, and does anybody sign him to play the backup role? And those are just the, the examples. There are others that are out there as well. I just wanted to throw those names out. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Where do you think these guys end up? That kind of thing. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.